Rocks rolling down the slopes of a rumbling volcano, pushing other bigger rocks on their way, and eventually tumbling down into the ocean in a humongous cascade, causing a wave the height of which the world's never seen before. This is what might happen if the Helena slump of the Hawaiian Big Island falls off into the water. The Kilauea volcano is far from dormant. The latest eruption occurred in 2018. Its eruptions are usually accompanied by earthquakes of different magnitudes. And with each quake, the magma rocks on the slopes of the volcano shift down. These rock formations are called slumps, and the Helena slump is the most notorious of them all. In 1868, the shift of this slump caused a tidal wave rising as tall as 60 feet. But what's most troubling is that some 110,000 years ago, a landslide here led to one of the most powerful earthquakes ever, which in turn led to a mega tsunami of over a thousand feet in height. Scientists are worried that such an event may repeat in the future. If that happens, the wave might engulf the whole of Hawaii and easily reach both North and South American coasts. Geologists are quick to reassure, though, that a landslide like this is unlikely to occur anytime soon. It's just too early for that. But when it finally does, the consequences will be catastrophic. Have a nice day! Yellowstone National Park in the western USA is world-famous for its dazzling views, and especially the colorful Grand Prismatic Spring at its very heart. But we should all stay aware that Yellowstone is, first and foremost, an enormous caldera, basically a slumbering supervolcano. The difference between a regular volcano, like Kilauea from earlier, and a supervolcano is that the latter is thousands of times more powerful. Imagine an eruption spewing tons of huge rock and rivers of hot lava, pumping out clouds of ash that make countries stop air travel for weeks. And now multiply all of this by a thousand. This is what a Yellowstone eruption would look like. At first, a huge area in the middle of the national park would shake, crumble, and then blast upwards in a megaton explosion. Lava flows and magma rocks would cover the area of about 40 square miles, roughly half of Washington, D.C. But the greatest danger is the volcanic ash. The ashen plume would rise miles above and get carried by the wind in every direction. Since the eruption would be far from ordinary, the spread and damage would also be much greater than usual. The ash is thick and heavy, so it would cover a vast area in a blanket, destroying crops and even buildings. Worse still, it would spread in the air and block out the sun, leading to a drastic drop in temperature and an artificial winter. Even regular volcanoes can lower temperatures worldwide by a few degrees. A supervolcano may potentially cause a new ice age. Luckily, the chances of Yellowstone supervolcano erupting in the near future, or at all, are extremely low. There have been only three of those in the history of Earth, and there's no evidence such a disaster should repeat. Scientists estimate the probability at 0.00014%, which is lower than the chances of an asteroid wiping us all out. Speaking of which… If dinosaurs could talk, and were at least still alive for that matter, they'd tell you that asteroid threat is as real as it gets. Scientists at NASA say they've tracked 90% of all near-Earth asteroids of significant size, and none of them are a matter of any concern. But there are still the other 10% in the great unknown. What's more, asteroids can change their line of flight because of the pull of other celestial bodies and eventually turn our way. Lucky us! Now, if an asteroid big enough, like a mile across, hits the Earth, it will first cause an explosion powerful enough to erase a dozen big cities in a matter of seconds. Then the impact will raise a cloud of dust and debris that will block out the sun, just like the ash cloud from a volcano, and cause a centuries-long winter on the whole planet. But even if it falls into the ocean, which is more likely, a resulting wave will rise several miles high, washing coastal cities off the face of the planet. But at least there won't be a new ice age. Although scientists are pretty sure there's no such threat in the near future, it can't be ruled out completely, and humanity needs at least five years to prepare for this event. If a big near-Earth asteroid suddenly changes its course and turns right toward our planet, we won't stand a chance against it. Disaster movie, anyone? A much more probable calamity, though, rests right beneath our feet. 
It's the San Andreas Fault in California. The fault has been ready for rupture for years now, and scientists estimate that an earthquake along this line is likely to occur in the next three decades. And when it happens, it won't be nice. They expect a magnitude of 8.0, which is comparable to some of the most devastating quakes in history. It's all the more dangerous since California is home to some of the most populated cities in the western US, including Los Angeles and San Francisco. High-rise buildings are common there, and they're particularly vulnerable against underground shakes. The San Andreas earthquake might cause a whole lot of damage, both to cities and countryside. In the worst-case scenario, the ground might break apart, destroying buildings, farms, and changing the landscape altogether. Still, scientists believe that the probability of such a quake is only 7% for the next 30 years. So there's a rather big chance, um, 93%, that we'll never see that in our lifetime. Yet there's another earthquake hazard not so far away from the previous one. The mega thrust in Chile. The country sits right above the subduction zone, an area where two tectonic plates meet and go one beneath the other. At the place of their meeting, stress has accumulated because of their continuous movement, and once that strain is too much, a major earthquake occurs. Chile has experienced a lot of quakes in the recent years, and scientists are worried those might be preparing the area for a really big one. They believe a great earthquake is due to happen before the end of the century, and it might be devastating to the coastal area. Even smaller quakes caused tsunamis that flooded the west coast, and a huge one like that is likely to raise a wave of incredible height. On the bright side, Chile now knows to prepare in advance for the coming natural disasters, and geologists are pretty sure people will be able to evacuate before the earthquake strikes. In September of 1859, astronomer Richard Carrington was looking at the sun and suddenly saw a bright flare on its surface. He made a note of it in his records, but only realized how important it was a couple of days later. The energy from that flare reached Earth and struck it directly, causing northern lights to appear above Cuba and burning telegraph lines all around the world. This was dubbed the Carrington Event, and it was a solar storm. Such storms hit the Earth fairly often, but none of them were so powerful as the Carrington Event, neither before nor after. But in 2012, astronomers registered a similar solar flare whose energy nearly hit our planet once again. If it had been just a week earlier, we'd have been in big trouble. Today, humanity relies on electricity in almost every aspect of life, and a powerful solar storm would mess with the electromagnetic field of Earth a lot. All electric appliances would either shut down or short-circuit, and huge transformers powering basically everything would go out of order for good. It would take years to repair them, and the cost of such a massive blackout would count in trillions of dollars. The worst of it is that science is almost unable to predict solar storms. And even if we could know about them in advance, we'd be powerless to stop them. The flare happens in a matter of seconds and it takes about 8 minutes for the particles to reach the Earth's atmosphere, causing the disturbance. The power outage would come a bit later, in a day or so, when a massive cloud of plasma gets to our planet. At the moment, there's no protection against solar flares, and the chances of one powerful enough to cut all of our electricity in the next few years are quite high, about 12%. The only good thing about all this is that we now know of such a possibility and can at least prepare in advance. Hey, don't forget to pack some underwear and socks, you'll always need those.